I started over rebuilding um, my book of business, and that book of business became Eris Insurance Solutions uh, on January 1st of 2018. So uh, we've had many customers that we've been working with for 30 plus years, but Eris Insurance Solutions uh, has been doing business since 2018, and it was just to be able to provide um, type of customer service at the standards I really held dear and operating with the values that were important to me, providing high levels of customer service. But it all came out of uh, our passion for what we've done in the past and to take it to the next level and, and to serve our customers that we've been serving for a long time. And then obviously to connect with new ones going forward today and, and well into the future. I've always liked to write. I've always enjoyed putting things together. I started my own literary journal when I was in college and just by coincidence, or maybe not so much a coincidence, I came into the business after our editor quit. And that was back in, oh my gosh, probably 2000 2013, 2012, something like that. It's been a long time. So I've been doing editorial for InFlight. I jumped into sales about seven years ago when the sales department needed more help. And I've been in a support role for sales and then... BizAv Jets USA was a spinoff when we had a customer come in who wanted to start his own publication for business jets. So BizAv Jets USA is about three years old, and that's how that came to be. That's how I was inspired to get into this because I love writing, I love photography, I love working with people, and my family has been doing this forever. So it's you know, just because you come from a family business doesn't mean it doesn't take a little inspiration to get into it because, you know, a lot of people don't want to be in the family business. They prefer to have some other kind of job. So I would say my writing and, and the people of In Flight Publishing have inspired me to get into this. Well, I'm not sure if I ever got inspired by it, but this has been our family business for 40 plus years. My dad started the business in 1984. It started off as a small aviation publication, mainly geared toward flight students. He was taking flying lessons and it, it was a small paper, mainly focused on flight schools. And they, he ran it as a journalism major, photographer. My mother was also a journalism major and writer, and they ran the business. And I came into the business uh, about 10 years ago. I, I mean, I've been helping in the business all my life, and I would say it's pretty inspiring around here. The, the people who work here are inspiring. They're really great at what they do. They're really enthusiastic. We love our employees like family. We love our customers like family. And I, I would say we've come across some really inspiring people around here. I've always liked to write. I've always enjoyed putting things together. I started my own literary journal when I was in college. And just by coincidence, <laughs> or maybe not so much a coincidence, I came into the business after our editor quit and that was back in, oh my gosh, probably 2000 2013, 2012, something like that. It's been a long time. 
So I've been doing editorial for InFlight. I jumped into sales about seven years ago when the sales department needed more help. And I've been in a support role for sales. And then BizAv Jets USA was a spinoff when we had a customer come in who wanted to start his own publication for business jets. So BizAv Jets USA is about three years old. And that's how that came to be. That's how I was inspired to get into this because I love writing. I love photography. I love working with people. And my family has been doing this forever. So it's, you know, just because you come from a family business doesn't mean it doesn't take a little inspiration to get into it because, you know, a lot of people don't want to be in the family business. They prefer to have some other kind of job. So I would say my writing and, and the people of in-flight publishing have inspired me to get into this? The answer is that um, I've always had a passion for aviation, and I really look forward to the opportunity to get involved in bringing a new airplane to market. It just seemed like um, kind of the perfect thing to, for me to be doing um, and working with the team. I um, I really wanted to do something that mattered, and the aircraft we're bringing to market is new. It has a low carbon footprint. It has a lot of other fantastic benefits. So the opportunity to bring this to the public in the commuter market, I just think it's a great, great thing to do. Um, also, I like the people. Michael, the, the founder, and the other advisors that I get to work with are fantastic. Of course, we always talk about aviation, so that's a plus. But it's been a really great experience for me working with the group. And finally, the role allows me to apply my skills, knowledge, and experience in aviation and as a consultant to a startup business and, and really stretch the limit of what I have done in the past and apply it to something right now. Obviously, there are, are challenges growing any business, and, and um, a lot of that just has to do with external factors, but most of it can be controlled um, as a leader. And some of that's having right vision, the values, having a drive and the discipline to execute on the things you need to grow your business. But at the end of the day, you need all those things in order to have great people to help you accomplish what you need to do. So, uh I, it's boss's day. I'm I'm not always a fan of the term boss. Uh, I think boss is responsibility, uh, not a privilege. And so, um, uh, obviously, it's it's only because of the people that I have on my team that work closely with me and 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 throughout our organizations uh, that we have the ability to serve people the way we do. And so, uh, one of the big challenges is just having the right people, and then being the kind of leader you need to be in order to keep the right people. And as you grow, being able to grow with your company so that you're not the, the limiting factor in the growth of the company. And so uh, on Bosses Day, I salute other bosses and just encourage them to see themselves as a leader and that the people they serve are there. Uh, you have to look at voluntarily. And uh, just because I pay them doesn't mean they have to, to come there the next day. So we have good people. We want a good culture. We want to treat them the right way. We want to steward their uh, strengths and abilities and help them to grow and to become the people they can become? Well, there's a lot of challenges in publishing. Um, it's it's always a balancing act, balance between ad content and editorial content, spending time on creating meaningful content and successfully securing the advertising that we need to continue to publish. I would say changing the model and, and getting up to date like I said, a lot has changed. You know, this was get enough content in the magazine and sell enough advertising. Now it's more of a you build it and they will come and leveraging all of the technology 
the social media, the search engines, artificial intelligence for content creation, learning about these things and leveraging these tools has been a challenge, especially when you have an older staff and when you're so used to doing it a certain way. So that has been our greatest challenge and overcoming that challenge, I would say just spending as much time as you can learning it. You know, when you're not working, spend time reading. Read an article every weekend when you're not working. Read an article in the evening before you go to bed. Read an article when you get up in the morning. Read as much as you can about how to improve the business. That was my strategy for overcoming them. And of course, we're a startup. So we're small, we're scrappy, we have a great product, and we're moving forward. But most of the team is virtual, and much of the team is part-time. So the challenges are really making sure that, that our team is engaged and making sure that, um, that we're working together and coordinating our efforts and we're getting the most value that we can out of the people that are on our team and that they are spending their time wisely, not wasting their time. Aviation is always an evolving industry filled with innovation and, and growing exposures and challenges. And so um, future of the aviation insurance industry will be the same. You know, it started uh, in 1911 with the first aviation insurance policies covering aircraft and powered flight. Um, and it's continued today as we move into insuring, you know, very large uh, insured values of aircraft, very large limits of liability aircraft and aviation businesses and airports to, you know, emerging technologies such as an unmanned aerial systems or drones, as some may call them, or even the advanced air mobility, the electronic uh, vertical takeoff and landing vehicles that are, that are coming out today. And so I think the industry will continue to become more efficient, promote safety and quality in the operations, and uh, obviously continue to improve our customer service through leveraging technologies and, uh, and just continuing to innovate ways to spread risk, mitigate risk, improve safety, and and uh, to serve the industry uh, we do in aviation. So aviation insurance is very integral to uh, successful and ongoing operations of aviation. And so I foresee it continuing to do that, just leveraging the innovations and improved technologies to do a better job of it. Well, that's an interesting question, and I, I've been thinking a lot about the concept of AI and artificial intelligence, and I think that's going to play a very important role going forward. I think there will be chatbots that help people write their press releases, chatbots that help people build their ads for digital display advertising, emails, social media posts, and ads that we will run in the magazine. These chat bots being utilized on our website or outside of our website, I think these are going to be big trends going forward in how aviation businesses market to the people, to the public. AI is going to be huge, and AI is going to influence all of the technology as we know it, the social media, the search engines, the chat bots. And, and magazines as we know them, digital magazines. It's going to influence email and email content. So I see these trends shaping the future of aviation media and publishing, and I want to learn about it as much as possible.
to aspiring aviation professionals would be just to be dedicated to the desired outcome you want to achieve. So whatever that is, um, have a vision for you, what you want it to look like and find a way to constantly keep that in front of you. There are many statistics that say that people who have written goals are much more likely to accomplish them than those who don't. And it's those people who are willing to do the things that others won't eventually succeed. So those who want to be disciplined, who will have daily, weekly, monthly habits that will help them achieve over the period of time their desired outcomes. So have a clear picture of what you want to do as best as possible, and then set those daily, weekly, monthly, and annually type of activities you need to do in order to reach them. Learning, executing, connecting with people, whatever it is that's going to get you to where you need to go. Well, I hope that there's aspiring publishers out there. I hope that there are people out there who still want to start publications or be bloggers or YouTubers or video publishers in this space. It may not look like how we started in Flight USA or how General Aviation News got its start 60 years ago. You know, we're old time newspaper people, but the future generations are going to be carrying on this legacy. They're going to be doing it on TikTok. They're going to be doing it on YouTube. They're going to be doing it on blogs. And it's all the same thing. I would say my greatest piece of advice is focus on the content, focus on doing right by the advertiser, give them the transparent analytics that they need to feel that their message is reaching the right people. It should be trackable. We need to be doing more work with QR codes and things like that. Some of these aspiring publishers could probably give me some advice, but I would say to any entrepreneur in the aviation industry, just remember that this is a tight-knit, community-oriented industry, and there's a lot of good to be done here, a lot of money to be made and a lot of good to be done. It doesn't always seem like it <laughs> on the financial side, but there's really a whole lot of good that can be done here, and it's a great industry. It's really evolving and innovative, and I would say the best piece of advice, and I would say this about anything, is to really just stick with it. Don't give up. When I'm asked what advice I would give about being a manager in the aviation industry, a couple of things come to mind. First, know your business. It's important to know your business, your metrics, how you make money. At the end of the day, if we're not making money, it's just a hobby. So you need to understand your metrics. If you're an FBO, those metrics will be different than if you are a charter operator or if you are an OEM like DB Tierra. Know your business, know how you make money. That would be the first. The second is it's difficult to be in charge of everything. If you have 50 employees, you really only have five or seven that you need to worry about. Focus on your direct reports. Really focus and work with them. As I've heard somebody say, there's only in their business, I only have seven people I have to love on. All of the rest is their responsibility. Pick your direct reports, find the very best people you can and get the right people in the right seats. Then focus on developing those people and have them turn around and develop the people that report to them. You can't manage everybody in the business. You focus on those that are close to you. The last thing I would say is develop a set of values and a culture in your organization. You want people that have the values and the culture that you do and that you want for your organization. People can learn to do new things. They can be trained, but it's very difficult to change behaviors, to change attitudes. Find people that mesh with your culture and then develop them and train them to accomplish the things that need to be done. If you do that first, you will then end up with the right people who grow into whatever position you need them to accomplish.
I love most about being a boss? Well, I've said several times already, um, being a boss, which I, it's not my favorite word, uh, being a leader of others is, it's a responsibility. It's, it's an opportunity. It's not just a privilege. People don't owe me everything because I give them a paycheck. So I see all of our team members as opportunities to steward that they could choose to work with us, someone else. I definitely want to treat them well. I want to give them opportunities to grow and learn and get better in their role and both personally and professionally. And so they're very much people and it's their choice to be here and to work with our company. And we want to give them every reason to want to succeed their fullest here with our company because that's going to result uh, in a more enjoyable work environment for us all. And it's ultimately going to result in uh, better customer service, uh, higher effectiveness and, and happier customers. So uh, I always see... Um, being a boss is an opportunity to serve others. And uh, my greatest joy is when I get to see um, people on my team become um, leaders and start to uh, lead other people and to make an impact in the lives of those they lead and, and those they serve. And so that's probably my favorite thing about being a, a boss or a leader. You know, I, I think of myself as somebody, as a leader, you know, I try not to be too bossy, but what I love, I, I love self-employment. I love all types of freelance work and self-employment. I have other magazines beyond in-flight that are not aviation related, and I do other freelance work where I'm still my own boss. And the freedom that it affords to give you is is amazing. It's It's wonderful. It's the American dream at its finest. Not everybody would agree, but I, I love that. And I love to be inspired by the people who come through here. We have great writers, salespeople, editors, graphic artists, production people. And I, I just love learning from them and working with them, hearing what they have to say and, and watching their talents come into fruition. And what do I love most about ABCI? ABCI has been a wonderful partner for us. They've done wonderful social media posts. They've advised us. They've given us great advice on how to come into the digital age, kicking and screaming as it may be. And we love all of our partners at ABCI, Paula and John doing such a great job and all of their staff who work tirelessly on the social media. We're so thankful to have you. We love giving you direction every month to make our message really stand out. And we thank you for that.